As we open the eighth chapter of John together, let me acknowledge that the first 11 verses, along with the last one of the previous chapter, is among the passages most argued about by New Testament textual scholars. Very simply, their contention has to do with whether this section is inspired, and if so, where it belongs in the Gospels. Now, I don't consider myself qualified to comment on this debate, so I rely on the hard work of others with far better credentials to explore the issue. And I find Jameson, Fawcett, and Brown to be very thorough, balanced, cogent, and scholarly. I agree with their assessment that although the arguments to the contrary are worth exploring, the evidence for considering these verses as scripture and rightly located is conclusive. So with that said, let's dive in, and I'd like to start by considering verses 1 and 2. Here we're told that after spending the night under the stars on the Mount of Olives, Jesus entered the temple early the next morning, sat down, and taught a crowd of people who had gathered. Oh, I wish I could have been there. Don't you? I can't imagine anything better than to have had the opportunity to start the day in the presence of Jesus, who was seated among them, not postured for just putting in an appearance before rushing off to more important things, and with loving patience pouring out his heart into theirs. Oh my gosh, it moves me now to think of it. But wait a minute. Hasn't the Lord invited each of us to enter this scene every day of our lives? Doesn't Revelation 3.20 articulate this standing offer? And what about Matthew 6.6, 6, where we're welcome to regularly encounter him, not just in a crowd, but in the privacy of the secret place? Perhaps the heart yearning these verses stirs in me isn't really about the possibility of being with Jesus in this way, but about the missed opportunities. Sadly, I often make the choice to begin my day without him. How about you? It may not be morning where you are as you hear this, but it's not too late to start the rest of the day with him. Let's do what we can to make that happen. Mute the phone, step away from the desk, grab a Bible, find a crevice of solitude, and sit with him while he infuses our lives with his.